Hey everyone, I'm Harry Collins, and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about my recent trip up to Alaska to photograph brown bears. Upon arriving in Alaska, I spent a day with a couple of friends driving around Anchorage looking for some wildlife before heading over the next morning to a small airport to catch our connector plane over to Katmai. The flight from Anchorage to Katmai was about, uh, about an hour or so. Uh, it was in a small plane and along the way we got to see a couple mountains up pretty close as we flew right over the peaks. Once we landed, we were shuttled down to a lake where we were going to catch our second flight, which was a float plane. From here, we'd be taking all of our gear ourselves, as well as all of the camp supplies needed for this trip. We were heading to a very remote spot, so everything had to be flown in in coolers and bear boxes. So as you can imagine, we were not going to have a lot of luxuries throughout the week ahead. Once we were inside the float plane, it was very tight. This is by far the smallest plane I've ever been on in my life. But it was all part of the experience. We were heading to a super remote area again, so there was not a lot of room for luxury here. And it was a short flight. It was only about 30 minutes. So before we knew it, you could see camp, and this will be our home for the next week. Once we arrived, conditions were pretty crazy. We had roughly 40, 50 mile an hour winds. So it took a crew of people to keep the plane in place as the rest of us formed a chain line to uh, unload everything, passing it down as we had to stand about knee high in the water to do all that. So a little challenging with slippery rocks and things like that, but we got it done. Being as remote into Alaska as we were, I was actually impressed with how much stuff they were able to actually have at the camp here, such as a charging tent. Uh, it was all solar power, but so charging was limited. However, it wasn't really an issue. I was able to charge everything. Uh, there was a kitchen. The meals were a little bit more elaborate than I thought, and they had an electric fence to keep the bears out. Uh, we did have some bears pretty close. There was a mom and three cubs the day we arrived right by camp, which was pretty neat. Inside the tents, it was a little bit more elaborate than I would have expected. Uh, there were a couple of cots, but the tent was tall enough to stand in. No lights or electricity or anything like that. But at least you could stand up, kind of move around a little bit, unpack your stuff, which was nice. And again, with no running water or anything like that, there was no showering. We brushed our teeth at the lake. And with limited electricity, I did bring some of these power banks for charging my laptop and a couple extra batteries when the solar power was low. Just to reiterate again, with everything being flown in, there was only so many supplies they can bring. So we did drink filtered lake and river water during the week. Uh, I didn't get sick. I don't know of anybody else that got sick. So I guess they do a pretty good job filtering it. And let's talk about the bathroom. This is probably the first question I got asked by everybody once I got back is where did you go to the bathroom? There was a toilet kind of set up a little bit away, probably 300 yards from camp. So you could have a little bit of privacy. But again, it's pretty basic. You know, you can kind of put the pieces together as you will, but you can't beat that view. So a normal day here was we got up, we had a quick breakfast, and then we would head out. It was a long hike, you know, maybe a little over a mile through the tundra with all of our gear down to the edge of the river. And then once we reached the river, uh, it could be another couple of miles walking through the water to get to a couple of spots that we were heading to. Uh, down by where the bears were fishing. We did have to cross some pretty deep water in a few spots with some running currents, but this is all part of the experience. We would end up totaling over 40 miles throughout the five days hiking, so there was a lot of walking around. And again, mostly through the river. I had spent a lot of money, more than I was comfortable doing on a pair of waders, but I couldn't be happier that I got them. Eventually we'd reach our spot where we were heading and we would stop and set everything up and just kind of wait for the bears to come. And usually it didn't take long before they showed up. And when I say they came close, I mean, they came really close. It was just an absolutely incredible experience. As you can see by my friend Dennis here, uh, you really, it's a weird feeling because in the beginning, it's definitely a little uncomfortable when a bear comes as close to you, but 
after you get used to it, I mean, it's really kind of just second nature here. You can tell that these bears just want absolutely nothing to do with us. They're just trying to go about their business. They don't care that we're there. They're not looking to harm us or anything. And it's just, it was a life-changing experience for me. The bears in this area are not hunted. They're around people generally from the time that they're born. And most of all, their food source here is so plentiful that it just, they're so focused on catching fish. So this was, this trip was during the sockeye salmon run. And there were just so many salmon that the bears, why would they need to attack us when they have this much of a food source here? That's so easy for them to catch. Photographing these bears or getting specifically the shots that I wanted turned out to be a little bit more of a challenge than I was expecting. I really wanted basically a full frame headshot of a bear with the salmon in its mouth looking right at me. I didn't really get that, I would say. I came close. The problem is a lot of times when they would catch the fish, they would hold it underwater for a few seconds and then they would pick it up and quickly whip their head right to the side heading towards the bank and they would take it off into the bank to go eat it. So I was able to get a few shots where they were partially turning. It was actually, they were turning away, but I caught them as they were moving. So it almost looks like they were looking at me, but um, that definitely was a little bit more challenging than I expected it to be. We did get a little bit unlucky on this trip with a couple of factors. The weather wasn't really ideal. I mean, it is Alaska. I don't expect it to be sunny, but we probably got maybe an hour of sun all week if that and when you see the shots that were in the sun it just it almost kind of ruined the rest of the shots for me but that's being really nitpicky the other thing is we didn't quite hit the peak of the salmon run they were very late this year the water level is very low and we think you know possibly that was impacting the salmon's ability to get upstream um, as the week went on the numbers of salmon did increase which also increased the action of the bears but the one positive thing was because the water levels were so low, the bears were running for hundreds of yards up and down the creek or the river, chasing the salmon. And in low water, they were creating these big splashes, which was really amazing as compared to just diving in the deep pools, which you know generally they dive in and give up after that. Gear-wise, I brought with me a Canon R5, Canon R3, a 400mm f4 DO2 lens, and a 100-500mm to lens. And I also brought a Cartoni Focus 12 and a Stabilo tripod. And there were a few days where, you know, I, well, I should say after the first day, I really questioned if I was going to be able to make it through the week with the physical intensity of this trip. However, you know, after a couple of days, you started to get used to it. I did have to leave the tripod behind a couple of days because it was just too much to carry. Uh, I also brought a wide angle with me, but it never left my bag. I generally use my phone for all the close shots. At the beginning of the trip, we were seeing mostly just female bears, a lot of cubs. But towards the end, as the salmon started to become more plentiful, uh, the big boars started to show up and this was a totally different experience when they were around. They're just so much more physically impressive and a little bit more intimidating. And when some of these guys would walk into the river, it would just completely clear out the other bears. One of the days when uh, the female bear would come over with her cubs and basically leave them with us. And she walked right by us to go out and fish. And I was able to take selfies with a, a mama bear on one side of me and cubs on another side. 
try that any place in the world other than here and you know maybe let me know how that turns out cuz chances are it won't have the same result that we had here but that was just absolutely amazing to be so close to these bear cubs that I almost could have touched them if I really wanted to The other thing that I was really happy about was seeing so many cubs. We saw so many bears with cubs throughout the week. And not only just cubs, but a lot of sets of triplets. I mean, it just really goes to show how well these bears are thriving in this area. And it just it made me really happy to see that. It also was pretty cool to be around uh, first year spring cubs or koi. Uh, that most likely it was their first time seeing people compared to some of the older cubs that the, the mama bears would actually start to fight them when she would catch a fish. They would come over and try to steal it and she was actually smacking them away trying to eat it herself. So you really got to see the full life cycle, if you will, of cubs from beginning first time at the river to probably one of the last times together as a family. So that was pretty neat as well. At no point during this trip, no matter how close the bears were, did I ever really feel threatened. Uh, they really, as I had said earlier in this video, they're really just there to go about their business. However, one of the days we did see a mama get a little bit defensive with another bear that was in the area. I think the bear was just looking to steal their fish. This mama bear had some cubs and she didn't like this other bear coming over. And she really let her know, let him know. It was super impressive and, and a reminder to see the other side of these bears because you almost become a little bit too comfortable when you're around these guys by the end of the week. Overall, despite the challenges, this was one of, if not the most amazing trips I've ever been on in my life. To see things that I'd only ever seen on TV, you know, I never dreamed in my lifetime I would be filming salmon underwater with my phone and lifting up to a bear or just being around this many bears so close. It was an unbelievable experience. I was so bummed when I saw that plane arrive to pick us up. I mean, I, I really did not want to leave more than usual. But one of the cool things on the way back, I did get to sit up front in the co-pilot seat on the float plane on the ride back. So that was pretty cool. As we made our way back, I could get one last glimpse of the bears fishing in the river. I could actually see the salmon. Some of the holes where the salmon were gathering were just, the river just looked completely red from above. And you could see some bears diving in and fishing as we were flying out. And that would be my last glimpse of them. But if you enjoyed this video, if you liked it, please feel free to subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you would like to do this for yourself, I can recommend the name of the guide. I can put that in the comments or in the description. Let me know if you want that info. But thank you for watching.